Merry Christmas. That's right, it's Christmas time, and you know what that means. <laughs> this winter season, I've come across a couple of movies that no one knows about or no one appreciates, and I'm gonna tell you guys to go watch those movies because they f I do want to include everyone, but I looked up non-Christmas holiday movies and all I got were a bunch of bad Hallmark romances and Eight Crazy Nights, which are both things that I don't want to subject anyone on this earth to. So those of you who don't celebrate Christmas, you're gonna have to f***ing deal with it. So here are my top five unknown or unappreciated Christmas movies that you should watch. Due to near blizzard conditions, all flights have been canceled. Happy holidays. Unaccompanied Minors is a wild-ass film. Five kids are labeled as unaccompanied minors in an airport at Christmas Eve, and then they're the only ones there, so they have to be somewhere that isn't the airport, and then from there, it's just literally PG-rated diehard. It's definitely got a lot of that Free Birds vibe to it, where you look at the reviews and you go, yeesh, this has gotta be terrible, and then you watch it, and it's, like, funny, like, at least a little bit, and you're very confused. No matter what you say about the script, the actors are putting 110% into this. All of the adult actors, whether they be background characters or main characters, are, like, from big sketch comedy shows, and all of the child actors grew up to do, like, fantastic things. If you're under the age of 13, you're gonna love it, but if you're over the age of 13, you're gonna love pissing on it. Either way, definitely worth a watch. Been oh, I didn't know it was the Cuban Missile Crisis! I nearly started World War III! What? Arthur Christmas is legitimately one of the best Christmas movies I've ever watched. The story is tightly written, it's heartfelt, the characters are well developed, but that's not the stuff you care about. I'm here to sell you on the thing that I think will sell most of my audience to this movie, the comedy. A lot of it comes down to the writing and the casting. So many of the characters would not nearly have been as funny if they weren't played by the people they were. Peter sang... Buckle down! Or Arthur sang Santa in Polish... Święte Mikulaj! Anyway, should not be as funny as they are, but they are. Steve telling me what the national dish of Germany is is not funny. It should not be funny. It's a normal line that needs to happen for the movie to progress. But Hugh Laurie voices Steve, so... National dish sausage. And it's not just the main characters. Even the background elves get some absolutely killer lines that aren't even funny. It's just because of the way the voice actors say it. Oops, bye-bye, Maria. So now I think it's time to mention that the written jokes that are actually supposed to be funny uh, are also very good. Not a big surprise there. All of their bits are great. The 1816 guy, the weird things they get Siri to say, Mexico. Then there's La Pisa de Resistance. The perfect combination of perfect casting and well-written jokes. Grand Santa. Bill Nye, that's Bill Nye, not Bill Nye, it does a, such a good job at bringing this 136-year-old man to life and bringing comedy to every single one of his gags. Whether he's coming up with great new names for Steve... I'm in charge here, not Billy the Bureaucrat. ...telling Bryony to go f*** herself... Hey, a stowaway! I can wrap anything, sir, with three bits of sticky tape! Three! Good! Wrap yourself a parachute! Come on, sir! Telling crazy war stories about being Santa. Christmas 1941, World War II, I did the whole thing with six reindeer and a drunken elf. Uh, or just being an absolute nutcase. It's impossible. They used to say it was impossible to teach women to read. He never failed to laugh at any of it. So yeah, this movie is like a 9 out of 10 on all fronts, but I know you guys. I know you guys really well. Uh, none of you would have watched this movie if I hadn't told you that Grand Santa is in it. So, Grand Santa is in it. Go watch it. I guess. Oh, I don't know, Connie. I've never declawed kittens before. How many? Eight? I don't know 90% of you didn't know what Christmas movie this was until the funny green Will Ferrell walked into frame. This is why it's going on this list. Everyone's seen it, but nobody has watched it. This year, instead of putting this movie on and going off to do your taxes, put this movie on, sit with your children, and watch it all the way through, every frame. You are going to uncover one of the most funny, one of the most heartbreaking, and one of the most adult stories that has ever been put to film. You don't need a reason for me to tell you to watch it. You put it on every year. You just need to actually sit down and watch it this time, idiot. You're finally going to find out what you've been missing out on. Dating has never really been easy, but modern online dating? You're married? Is even harder. I know the words Netflix original Hallmark-style Christmas romance movie might have literally just put you into cardiac arrest, but hear me out for a second. Have you ever wondered what it might be like if a Hallmark Christmas movie was actually good? Because that's what this is. Meet Natalie, a woman who's been doing online dating for years, but hasn't quite seemed to find the right fit, and uses that as fuel for her blog. It is until she matches with Josh. 
he likes outdoors, he's smart, he's kind, and he's conventionally attractive. We, we, we can't forget that. So after having long conversations with him for months on end, she decides to finally go over to his house for Christmas and surprise his family. But it turns out she's been catfished, and he actually isn't conventionally attractive. That seems a little racist movie, but okay, I'll go with it. But the family still thinks she's his girlfriend, so they have to pretend to be together throughout the entirety of the holidays, and wacky hijinks ensue. So after that plot synopsis, you're definitely thinking, okay then, this is terrible, right? Uh, the answer is no. This is a fantastic movie. Because of the way Christmas romances work, you know where the movie starts and you know where the movie ends. But the way this movie gets you is the way the middle of the movie is sorted out. She's gonna get together with the guy who catfished her at the end. Yeah, who cares? We already know what was gonna happen. But the thing is, uh, how? How did they get to that point? And that's where this movie thrives. The situations they get in and the way they get around them are, like, comedic genius. And the character dynamics are so perfect. Everyone misunderstands everyone else, and it leads to this giant tangled web of just hilarious lies. And one of the best Christmas movies I've seen in a long time. If you don't like Hallmark movies and want to see one done right, watch this movie. And if you do like Hallmark movies and you need your addiction to bad media medically cured, you should watch this movie. Literally everybody everywhere should watch this movie. Un un unless you don't celebrate Christmas, or, or unless you're like six. And finally, my number one most unappreciated Christmas film is... It's January! <laughs> <laughs>